Hello everyone, this is Monica from KSR Data Vision. So in this video, we'll see about Jenkins. So let's see the modules to be covered. So what is Jenkins? Architecture of Jenkins, continuous integration with the tools. And we'll wind up with a small example of continuous integration, right? So let's see what is Jenkins. Jenkins is an open source automation tool written in Java with plugins built for continuous integration purpose. So we can say Jenkins is a continuous integration tool. Okay, this continuous integration tool is used to build and test your software projects continuously. Okay, so making it easier for developers to integrate the changes on the project and making it easier for users as well to obtain a fresh build. So in short, we can say Jenkins is a continuous integration tool that allows continuous development, test and deployment of newly created code right so how was development before jenkins so this was a, a good question right so jenkins has given us so much feasibility to deploy when and wherever we want right so but how was a develop development before jenkins so developers has to complete the code testing before uh, they would check for errors and developers on team has to work independently each created large segments of code to add to their base code right so the entire source code would be checked for errors which is a time consuming and a challenging process for a developer so multiple developers would send com commits to the version control increasing the time requirement to identify and to fix their bugs, right? So there was no iterative code or improvement and the software delivery process. Overall, the software delivery process was slow before Jenkins. So when Jenkins came into picture, it was first it was open source and which is free for completely. And then it is a which has a continuous integration process to commit the code, build, test, stage, and then deploy. So after Jenkins has came into the picture, this feasibility has been there to so where a developer can commit the code whenever and wherever required. Right. So let's see the architecture of Jenkins. Okay, so the Jenkins was having a master slave architecture process, which was one of the advantages here. So let's see this diagram to understand better for the architecture of a Jenkins. Okay, as you can see the diagram here on the left side, you can see the remote source code repository and and the Jenkins server access the master environment on the right side and the master environment can push down to the multiple other Jenkins slave environments to distribute the workload. Okay, so these are the multiple slaves which is being distributed, the workload has been distributed from master to slave. Okay, so then which lets you to run the multiple build, test and product environments across the entire architecture where Jenkins slave can be run on different build versions of a code for different operating systems. And the server master controls how each of the build is being operated. Right. So here, if you can see when the Jenkins master has been build, build has been started, it can handle the multiple slaves along with the multiple operating systems where depends on the application. Right. So this is how a master slave architecture works. Okay. So if it is clear, let's go to interesting topic continuous integration where Jenkins is all about continuous integration right so continuous integration is a practice of automating the integration of a code changes from multiple contribution into a single software project and where the DevOps is a best practice which has been allowed developers to frequently merge their code changes into a central repository where build and test and then run right so continuous integration is preferably to be a night build and integration process which runs at day's end whenever has gone 
everyone has been gone home and the application has not been used so that is called the nightly integration process uh, so occurring only for once a day as opposed to the continuous process of ci developers agree that nightly integration is useful in a situation where the build process takes such a uncoordinately large amount of time to build and then test right so here after this complete discussion the continuous integration has been now built each and every minute whenever we want and now there is no rule or a formula that they we have to deploy only at a night time right when say the application is not in use okay so here we have to keep in mind that this continuous integration is can be used each and every time only for the few and few branches like dev sit and uat okay and for uat also when there is some testing going on we have to ask the permission of testers so that we can deploy right so because for uat or for sit also it will take few minutes to deploy in the server okay so there there may be some downtime and for prod we have to take the complete approvals for build and to deploy right so continuous integration is useful for all kinds of branches but for prod we have to maintain a particular downtime to build and to deploy for this continuous integration process okay so the those all things the devops engineer has to keep in mind okay before for prod and for sit when and wherever we want we can merge our code and then we can deploy it that we don't have any problem and for uat as i told you need to ask bas if they are testing then we have to wait for them otherwise we can merge our code and deploy so build process won't affect the testing theme but when you deploy then it affects your testing part right so you have to keep in mind if you have seen here see when you commit a code and the build then until testing there's an there should be no problem when you stage or when you merge it and then deploy then you have to ask permissions from bas like if you are not asking permission it is not such a problem but if they it may interrupt their testing phase right so this is continuous integration so here the continuous integration is having a small diagram where you can see the developer we have a get version control and then the jenkins ci server, jenkins continuous integration server to build right so now we have few tools which is supported for continuous integration not only jenkins we have the ci cd for gitlab we have bamboo team city github actions and circle ci so most of the companies are using this jenkins and this gitlab ci cd pipeline where are very frequently used from many organizations okay so let's see a small example for the continuous integration okay so the can if you can see the diagram here it's just like an architecture we have learned before okay so here is a developer who is writing the code so once the code has been committed it goes to ci tool which is called jenkins so this ci server continuous integration server will helps us for building an application from this source code right this is an automation process here so when a developer commits the code it from to the source code uh, directory which may be a git so from there automatically the continuous integration uh, server started process for building an application right so once the ap application has been built if everything okay then it goes to the next phase right which is for testing phase if not in the build server if something is wrong with the source code or the if the problem is detected then it goes back to a developer with an email stating the build has been failed with so and so reason okay so this is how if the so source code has been detected with some problem let's say if source code is good enough and everything seems okay it go to the next phase which is testing phase okay so there the testing phase after the testing phase if the testing is also okay then it goes for the staging and 
deploying into a particular server where your application will be ready after the deployment. Let's say in the below stage or uh, where the testing has been detected with some other problem, then again it goes back to a developer with stating an email that the testing has been failed with so and so reasons, right? Then if then they can rectify the code again and they can push the code to the source code again and the CI, CI process will be same. Okay, so if everything looks okay, it goes to testing. After testing, it goes to stage and then for the deployment. Once it, it has been deployed, the source code has been deployed inside the server, your application will be ready. Okay, if not, if after, after the, during the deployment, if something happens, if the problem has been detected, then will it goes to developer? No, it goes to DevOps engineer. So in this stage, if the deployment has been failed with some reasons, it will go to a DevOps engineer stating that well, uh, the deployment has been failed and the email will be triggered in such a way, right? So these all will be, there's all specifications to get the email and this all related things has been inbuilt in the Jenkins where there is an option called manage Jenkins, right? So there you have to give your related things for email. You have to enable your email notification and other things, right? So in the Jenkins file, which is in, inside your uh, GitLab for the CICD process, there you are in the inside the Jenkins file, you have to provide your email addresses to send this notification whenever a problem is detected in your either build or in your deployment, right? So this is how a complete continuous integration process is gone through. So here we not we have seen CI and as well as CD also, right? So CI is continuous integration and CI CD is continuous delivery. Delivery in the sense where the this source code has been deployed inside a particular server where your application will be ready, right? So that is continuous delivery. So I hope you all understood the topics about the Jenkins, right? So we have Jenkins architecture and the tools which cover this continuous integration and with a small example. Okay, friends. Thank you for listening this video.